One problem that can come up when using your Linux operating system over an extended period of time is that you need to increase your disk space. Especially on laptops and workflows that require all data to be locally stored on the device, this can be a challenge to set up, as cloning a disk to another one is not always the same as on Windows. In today's video, I'm going to show you a couple of graphical ways on how you can clone all your data from one disk to another so that you can use it afterwards as your new main drive. This video has been requested and made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to share your own video ideas, see what's going on behind the scenes and become a valued member of our community, then please make sure to check out the join button or link in the video description below. When it comes to Linux, there isn't always a straightforward way on how you can clone a disk to another one, especially when the operating system is running. On Windows, many of the tools that you find online that allow you to do this use the Volume Shadow Copy Service, short VSS, a built-in service that allows you to create a snapshot on a block level. This sounds very complicated, but in a nutshell, instead of just copying files over to a new location like you might be familiar with, VSS freezes the state and content of a block which might be part of a bigger file for later use, like copying it to a new disk or restore it to that fixed state. So we basically freeze Windows in time and then move that frozen image over to a new disk, including everything from the bootloader partition that starts your operating system to system files, your own data and so on and so forth. You might ask yourself though, what happens if I have a file open that's not saved yet, I start the cloning process and save it afterwards? Well, while VSS technically has some features that can handle such a scenario, many tools that utilize it to clone your disk don't use them to avoid breakages and it's generally not recommended in the first place. Let's move on over to Linux. The reason on why Linux is not as straightforward as Windows is because we have many different distributions that use many different file systems. Windows NTFS, the one that you always see in the disk manager, does support snapshots. ext 4 on Ubuntu, Linux Mint and Sorinos for example does not. BetterFS on Fedora and OpenSUSE do support them, however sometimes some setup is required. The quickest way is of course to do the obvious and the thing that you want to ideally do on Windows as well. Just use a software that doesn't require the operating system to be running and that's what we're going to start with. RescueZilla is a free and open source disk backup and recovery tool that allows you to, well, make backups and restore them, clone a disk to the same size or bigger one and inspect the files that are stored on it. You can technically also clone to a disk that's smaller, though this is not a task for beginners and requires deeper knowledge in tools like Gparted, so only do this on your own risk. All you need to do is to download the tool from the official website, use a tool like Pelina Etcher, the Fedora Media Writer or the Disk Image Writer on GNOME based desktop environments to write the image to a USB stick or another drive that is not being used in your cloning process. Restart your PC and boot into it by pressing F7, F8, F12 or whatever else the key on your PC is to bring up the boot menu. If you don't know it, then it's best to look it up online. Afterwards, you can simply choose clone disk, select the source disk which to clone and the new one where to clone it to and it's as simple as that. Once everything is done, you can go into your UEFI by finding the right key and change the boot order to the new disk. But Michael, why did you make this so complicated? Tools like the GNOME Disk Utility allow you to create a disk image of a drive which you can then restore on another disk. True, but not every graphic Linux program supports this in the first place, which makes showing this a bit more complicated. If you want to backup, restore or clone a disk exactly like on Windows, then on Linux you either need to set up your operating system with LVM during the installation process or you check if your distribution uses BetterFS or another file system with snapshot support by default. Fedora for example does use it, but it's not set up for snapshot support unless you install and configure a tool called Snapper that enables it. You can pair it with a graphical application like the BetterFS Assistant, but setups are not the same across different distributions and just like VSS, they are more meant for rolling back changes instead of cloning a disk, even though you can technically use them like that. So if you want to clone your disk from an old one to a new one, then I recommend to use an offline tool like RescueZilla that actually clones your disk instead of relying on snapshots that you need to set up first in some cases. Or you can try the create and restore image functionality in tools like Gnome Disk, which does also usually work. General backups like on a file base or for a system restore with a live disk or after you reinstalled your operating system and want it exactly like before can be done with Timeshift or just for user data Dejadoop. 
They both work really well in making sure that your data is being kept safe, can be easily restored while running your PC, and with the setup speed of a Linux operating system in contrast to others like Windows, I actually like these backups a lot more as they give you a cleaner slate. I for example keep my heavy hitters like video games or my video files on a different disk, so I can easily use StatiaDupe or TimeShift to restore my system in case I need to set it up from scratch. I can choose what to backup and what not, choose what to restore, and for me personally that's enough. Tools like RescueZilla are definitely handy and have their place, but they do not offer the seamless integration that Windows offers with VSS. While some file systems offer similar functionalities, they might not be configured on your system or missing some crucial dependencies that require manual setup. In the end, those are the options that I found personally, but maybe there are many more that I don't know of yet. For example, I didn't cover any command line tools at all. If you know any other programs or even use some of them to back up your system or clone it to a new disk, then I would really appreciate it that you would share it in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. I really hope that you've liked today's video. If you did, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. And all that's left to say now is... Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.